Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the new video limiter in Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe updated the video limiter in the newest versions of Premiere Pro. The old one is called Legacy and the new one is just called the uh, video limiter. You use the video limiter to limit RGB values to meet the HDTV digital broadcast specifications. If you're on YouTube, don't even worry about this. Um, just it's only for broadcast. But if you do come from the broadcast world and you're not broadcasting 601 analog uh, video, then um, this is for you. This is a new update that is just all around much better, more control, um, and I'll go through some of the settings for you. All right, so I have some clips here that exceed the broadcast standard, especially some of the brights up here. The video limiter is in the effects. If you type in limiter, you'll see the old one in the obsolete category, video limiter, and the new one in the color correction category, video limiter. And I've already applied that uh, to this adjustment layer. So you can apply this per clip, you can apply it to an adjustment layer, or you can apply it as an effect during export, so you don't have to pick every clip. I'm doing it this way so you can see the results before you make the, your output. We're also looking at the waveform and the Lumetri scopes uh, to show us what uh, in fact is, is changing in the video, which can be a little bit hard to see. Here's the video limiter, and uh, right now it's set to 103 uh, IRE, which stands for the Institute of Radio Engineers. It's how the RGB levels are measured. And you can see on the right hand side of the scopes here, and this is what we're going to be looking at. So um, if we change this to 100 IRE, but the SIMPTI range, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers range, again, you're not gonna see much of a difference until we start adding the compression. But if you really want to see what's what's changing, you can turn on this gamut warning. And it's going to highlight the areas where we're having problems. So we can change the color. So if you don't like this fuchsia color, maybe we can go to a brighter um, green, which is a little easier in these darker areas. So now that you can see that this is going to be affected, if I turn off the warning, and turn on and off the effect, you might be able to see a little bit of a difference in there. Like I said, it's going to be larger when we add compression. So those are the first two. Next up is the European Broadcasting uh, Union standard of 103, which is preferred. And again, let's turn that on and off. And the gamma will change depending on what's being changed. So you can see a lot more is allowed through in there. And then this is the 109 IRE. This is the SDI limit. Oh, one of the problems that you, you can have is that it's, it's clipping the top levels. So this limiter can actually bring those levels into the allowed amount before it gets clipped. Uh, and this is going to apply a knee starting at either 3, 5, 10, or 20% below the clip level. So let's go back up to our SMPTE range here and change this to 3%. And you can see that topped move down. So again, I'll turn on the gamut warning and go to 5%. 10%. Oh, you can see some more of those over there. And 20%, a lot is changed. So that is coming way down now. So if I have this, leave this at 20% and turn the effect on and off, you'll see right here the highlights in the smoke are going through. And that's this top level here that you see in the scopes. So it can't, it can't keep the brights at that bright level and move them down, but it can keep uh, what it can and, and move it down. So it's, uh, it is reducing the amount of uh, uh, that range, but keeping it in there. And of course, we could do this with the 103. 
can see in that effect, it's moved up a bit. Again, with the EBU standard and the 109. So they're, each one is moving 100, 103, 105, 109 accordingly. It's important to note the Y value is not being changed, the chrominance, which was the old effect, and that only applied to 601 uh, analog video, not digital video. That's why this is most, this is exactly for the digital broadcast standards, not analog. As I mentioned, you could run this effect uh, like I have it on an adjustment layer, but you can also add it in the export settings. So in the effects settings, if you scroll down, you'll see video limiter. And obviously you wouldn't apply it in both places, but I can turn on the video limiter here. I can choose all the same IRE settings. I can choose the same compression before clipping. So all of those same settings that apply. The gamma warning obviously is not here. It won't be applied uh, on the way out. Another interesting thing is if we uh, chose a proper uh, broadcast format here. So we're at AS11, turn on the video limiter, turn on our certain compression that we want, our limit that we want. If you click on this button right here will allow you to save that as a preset so you could save it as an AS11 broadcast format with the limiter built in. And now you're just picking that and, and it could have that the compression settings uh, before the knee value and uh, IRE that you want. So you don't have to constantly go in there and figure that out. You could also save a preset, uh, an effects preset in Premiere Pro. But the other reason why this is good to save it here in the export settings is you could now use this in Media Encoder. So you could drag a whole bunch of videos into Media Encoder and have it convert to the broadcast format and apply the digital uh, broadcast video limiter at the same time. Pretty darn good. So I think this is useful for anyone in uh, the digital broadcast world. Uh, if you have to do analog broadcast, then you can use the legacy one. But this is now updated and much better. YouTubers, don't even worry about this. Just send your video out the way you do as H.264. All right. If you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and one on the front of the channel. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to keep you informed of everything inside Adobe Premiere Pro.